Hello, my name is Yuri, we're Group 15, and we're going to demonstrate to you our collaborative drawing application called Let's Draw Life. Our application uses CADTs, short for Conflict-Free Replicated Data Types, to provide the collaboration um, for our drawing app. But what does that actually mean? Let's go through a very simple CADT data type to show you how they work. So here we have the simplest CADT possible, a shared Boolean flag, which is initially set to false for all users. And the only operation available is for each user to set their flag to true. But once that happens, we have a problem. Is the shared state now true or false? So we have to define some kind of merging function that puts those two states together. And here we use the maximum and say that true is larger than false. This already shows a very important property for CDTs, that the states of the shared variables have to grow whereas the operations that are changing the state don't have to be ordered at all. Now extrapolating from this, we can actually design drawing and erasing using CDTs. For drawing, this is very simple. Let's think, let's think about just a simple stroke. And while I'm drawing this, I'm just adding points to it. So we can implement this as an append-only list of points. But for erasing, we didn't want to be limited to just the initial set of points we drew. So in order to support um, continuous and smooth erasing, we think about a stroke as a number line. And the integers on that line are the indices of the original points. If we then start erasing from the beginning, we have an interval that goes from 0 to, say, 0 0.5, so halfway to the first point. If we continue erasing, that interval just grows. If we erase a little bit from the other end, we just add a separate interval. And finally, once we've erased the entire stroke, all those intervals collapse into just one huge um, interval that covers the entire stroke. Now with this, um, these design ideas in mind, um, we initially implemented our um, data structure using the general purpose CDT library called YJS. However, due to performance concerns and some specific degrees of freedom in our application that we wanted to exploit, we then later on moved to our customly written um, drawing CDT um, that we implemented in Rust. And only through that were we were able to gain um, the performance we needed to actually support real-time drawing interaction. One of our objectives was to make connections with the app peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, which means there's no single point of failure like with the server. Well, the web wasn't traditionally meant for peer-to-peer -peer communication between browsers, and the WebRTC API, which allows this, is quite new. That's why normally a project like ours would be targeted towards mobile native platforms, which are more powerful. Uh, but this gap's been closing over the years, and that's good, because the web is everywhere. Our app could run on any modern web-enabled device, which makes it especially valuable as a proof of concept. Uh, one big perceived problem with web apps is the need for an internet connection. So part of how we compete with native platforms is to provide some level of offline access with the end goal of being able to collaborate over LAN without any dependency on the internet. Um, we cache the front end of our app using um, browser storage APIs, but we still rely on the back end to help clients initiate connections with each other. Maybe this is something that could be substituted by some um, peer discovery API that will be built into browsers eventually, but there are workarounds that exist today, as Alexander will discuss later. Hi, I'm Tiger. I'm going to be explaining how we made our app interoperable with another group. So one of the main things in industry right now is the problem of vendor lock-in, whereas users are forced them to continue to use one vendor because of incompatible protocols or incompatible formats. We worked with another group and one of the main things our supervisor wanted was for these two groups to be working together. For us, we're on the web and for them, they're on iOS. And one of the technical question is, can we draw on the web and have the same stroke appear live in real time on the other group's app? One of the obvious questions would be, well, couldn't we just use the same protocol for this? Unfortunately, our architectures are quite different. We use WebRTC, which is a widely supported web-specific technology to make peer-to-peer -peer connections between websites, whilst the other group uses more of a native iOS stack. The XMPP protocol is a, an industry standard way for apps to communicate on different servers through often disparate interfaces, and we use XMPP to communicate to a central server to mirror our data for other people to consume. Something like this, where an architecture with an XMPP server sitting in the middle and two sides which consume the data is used to enable interoperability and mirroring of our stroke data to them and vice versa. Hi, I'm Giovanni and I'll guide you through the application. So, as soon as we go into the website, we can see how the brush tool can be used to draw stuff on the screen. 
and if you double click on it we can personalize something like the brush size as well as the color and we can draw something using these preferences we can erase stuff using the eraser tool we also have a hand tool to move things around which is comfortable if you use a mobile device and then put that back together also we've got support for shape recognition and we can recognize squares and rectangles as well as straight lines if we draw a very long line we can see how the shape recognition algorithm works and we can see a preview of a straight gray line here that will turn this curved line into a straight line as soon as you release the mouse also, if you're not happy with our shape recognition system, we can roll back using the undo tool and you can go back point by point or erase entire shapes. Now let's see what happens if we join a crowded room. Let's go into presentation. We can see someone has already drawn something and if we go up here on the top left corner, we can see someone is in the room already and we can see how we can draw stuff at the same time together and erase stuff so we've got support for both drawing and erasing at the same time Hi, I'm Alexander, thank you for watching so far I'm just going to go over what the future possibilities we thought of with Let's Draw Up Live are First of all, we'd like to make Let's Draw Up Live work fully offline without any connection to the internet required at all um, this could be through user-friendly connection mechanisms like QR codes or even Bluetooth. Um, and then moving on from that, we also want to make um, the connection process to rooms and the privacy considerations for users much clearer. So adding passwords to rooms, for example, or other ways of making users able to control who they connect to and what they share. Uh, thank you for watching again.